Traveling around Greece by ferry can be an amazing experience, but it can also be hectic and overwhelming. I was so close to messing up my whole trip, so definitely don't do this when you come to Greece. Don't be stupid like me. So as you know, this year I decided to come back to Greece and I went to five different locations around the country. And in this video, I'll show you my day traveling from Athens to the beautiful island of Milos and share with you everything you have to know about traveling Greece by ferry. Good morning! It's still early morning here in Athens. I'm sitting on the balcony and having some coffee. The sun is already so strong, I can barely see anything. So my ferry leaves today at 3.40, so I still have some time to kill. I mean kill. Not really to kill when you're in Athens. I still have some time here in Athens, so the first thing I'm gonna do this morning is breakfast. Or actually, I'm gonna go to the pool first, and then breakfast. This whole pool area is very nice, and when you look up there, uh, you can actually see Acropolis. I mean, it's really small, but when you zoom, you see it. I'm afraid my camera is gonna blow away. It's quite windy. Anyways, my whole game plan with food whenever I take a ferry is making sure that I don't eat right before the ferry. The thing about sea is like, it doesn't really matter if you have tendency to get motion sickness or not. If the waves are gonna be big, I mean, a lot of people will get sick anyways. So um, I think in general, it's a good idea to plan your meals so you don't eat right before getting on the ferry. And this is what I'm having for breakfast. Shit tons of bread as usual, some egg, beans, and unidentified, oh no, that's feta cheese, okay. So I am finishing up packing right now and I'm about to go out and take metro to the port. A taxi from central Athens to the port will cost you about 10 to 15 euro and the metro ticket is like one and a half euro I think, so... So the funniest thing just happened. I was walking around, I guess, looking confused. Not because I am confused. I totally know what I'm doing here. And then this lady just came over to me and asked me if I need a ticket. Like this lady, I mean a girl my age. And I was like, yeah. And then she just gave me a ticket. I don't understand. I mean, I don't know what happened. I guess she bought a ticket and she didn't need it. Um, so cool. Uh, so now I have to walk over to the gate where my ferry is departuring from. So this port in Athens is the biggest port in the country. So you do have multiple different gates. So this is not only the biggest port in Greece, but it's actually the busiest port in all of Europe. So as I said, if you're traveling from here, it's really important to check which gate your ferry is departuring from because the distance from one gate to another can be even more than one kilometer. But in general, I would say that the port itself and the whole area are actually very pleasant and everything is very well organized. It doesn't really feel too overwhelming. Well, at least not until the ferry gets there. So I think I'm gonna go to the gate first and make sure that is the correct place where my ferry will be departing from. Uh, and then I will share with you all the things that you need to know about traveling by ferry in Greece because I did use my time on the metro wisely. I wrote a whole list of things that I want to tell you. Okay, so this is the gate 9. And I guess that's where people are waiting. So how do you check the ferry schedule and how do you buy the tickets? 
The easiest way is to do it online. There is a website called fairyscanner.com that I use where you can check the schedule. I usually just check the schedule there and then I book the tickets on the individual fairy company's website. Did I say it weird? You know what I mean. There are a lot of different fairy companies in Greece. Uh, today I'm traveling with SeaJet. If you don't want to buy it online, you can also just buy it at ticket offices. That's actually what I did last summer. Last summer I was traveling around Greece without a plan really. So whenever I was, you know, uh, making decision to go to a different island, I would just find a ticket office everywhere on the islands. There are plenty of them. I would just walk in and get tickets and that was pretty much it. As I said, there are several different ferry companies. There are both speed ferries uh, and then there are normal ferries. The main difference between them is price and time. Obviously, speed ferries are much faster. They can be like literally three, four times faster and they also cost like three, four, five times more. So if you are not in Harry, you can actually save up a lot of money if you take the regular ferries. My personal favorites when it comes to ferry companies in Greece are SeaJet and Golden Star ferries. Uh, but to be honest, my favorite ferry rides are just always the ones where I can go up on the deck. For me personally, the experience of being outside on the deck and feeling the breeze is like the main reason why I take ferries. Not all ferries have decks though. I've noticed that old sea jet ferries don't have them and the new ones, they do have them. Uh, and with Golden Star ferries, it's kind of the opposite. The new ferries don't have decks and the older ones, the bigger ones, they often do. I thought that I'll also mention here that if you don't have much time in Greece, it might be worth it to check flights. A lot of the islands like Santorini, Mykonos, even Milos have airports. And just to give you an example, the price for my ferry ticket from Athens to Milos was 79 euro for the speed ferry and the plane ticket was 120 euros. So of course flights are more expensive, but the difference is not as big as I expected. Something that I've learned this summer, even though it might be obvious, is that you should book ferries before you book your accommodation. Might be obvious to some people, but apparently it wasn't obvious to me. I was so close to messing up my whole trip, so definitely don't do this when you come to Greece. Don't be stupid like me. So basically what I did was that I checked the ferries from Milos to Eos and you know the ferries were there everything was fine and then I just decided to go on making my plans booking accommodation without checking if the ferries go every single day and the reason why I did this mistake was because as I said I've been to Greece several times before I've traveled with ferry a lot and I've never really had this issue usually whatever day I wanted to travel on I would just show up and get the ticket and that would be it but I think the problem is that before I was always traveling to more popular destinations like Mykonos and Turini uh, Corfu and obviously the more popular destination is the bigger chances that there will be more ferries and this year I'm traveling to a little bit less known places like Milos for example and Milos is not as touristy as, as some of the other islands and I am I record oh my god thank god I am recording so based on my experience I just assumed that there will be ferries every single day but it turned out that, that, that that's not the case there are actually only three ferries per week that go from Milos to Eos and obviously the day that I was supposed to travel from Milos to Eos there was no ferry and not even the day after so imagine if I would find that out while I was in Milos I mean I would be really pissed the only way I was able to you know fix this little mistake that I did was to add another island in between and I already I'm already on a very like packed intense schedule so it was just not ideal so now the plan is that after Milos I will go to Paris for just one night which is it's a bit silly but it's okay that was the only thing I could have done. Uh, I could only just choose another island and Paris is sort of in between. And then that day there's no ferry from Paris to Eos so I had to stay in Paris for one night which I'm not mad about though. Like I'm saying it as if it was like this big you know um, 
issue, but no, because Paros happened to be my favorite island in Greece. So, you know, I'm not super mad about it. I think the ferry is late, even more late than it was supposed to be. Bummer. But luckily I did book a transportation from the port in Mills to where I'm staying. I don't think that it would be necessary if I would arrive in like daytime and now I'll be arriving around 8, maybe even later, so it's gonna be kind of darkish already. I mean, of course, Greece is a safe place to travel and uh, it's not like I feel uncomfortable here or anything, but I just prefer not to do things like, you know, figuring out transportation by myself at night in a new place that I'm not familiar with. It's very different with places that I've already been to uh, and, you know, I know where to go and all that. And I think when you know where to go, uh, it shows on people that you're confident and you're just doing your thing and you're just going to wherever you're going, right? Once the ferry arrives, it can get a bit hectic because both people and cars are getting off the boat at the same time and then everyone who's getting on is already waiting. There are actually so many people here. When you get on the ferry, there will be an area where you have to leave your luggage. If you have bigger luggage, like bigger suitcase, you will have to leave them below the deck. But if you're traveling with just hand luggage, which is what I did, you can take it up with you. They usually check your tickets once you go up to the main sitting area. I would just always use the mobile ticket version, so QR code. Um, yeah, on this whole trip, I have not printed my ticket even once and it always worked, like the QR code thing always worked. So my genius game plan of not eating it definitely did not work out because the ferry was late. Um, so I, I got really hungry and as soon as I walked into that ferry, I got myself a cheese pie. Uh, also because I freaking love cheese pies. Like Greek pies are just the best and all ferries I've taken in Greece, they always have these like little shops slash cafe where you can get snacks, coffee. Thank you. And then I spent majority of that three and a half hour journey on the deck just listening to music and staring at this beautiful view which is like one of my favorite things to do in Greece So I can't see anything on my screen anymore because it's like copper and sea salt um, But we just made it to Sipnos uh, so we have about 40 more minutes to Milos. I don't know if you can hear anything because it's so freaking windy. I don't even think my wind protection can handle that level of wind. officially made it to Milos and now I'm just sitting here uh, with my little private pool in the background. I'm so excited. Oh. Look how freaking pretty this outdoor area is and it looks even better from here from this angle. As you can see this pool and the hills and the sky is turning pink. I'm gonna give you a proper room tour tomorrow and for now I'm gonna finish this vlog off because I am tired. I guess that's how it always goes with traveling, right? Uh, you just get tired when you travel. I also got super nauseous. Not super nauseous, let's not exaggerate, but I did get nauseous. I hope this video was helpful for those of you who are considering traveling Greece by ferry. And I hopefully see you soon, tomorrow. Not like actually tomorrow, but I'm vlogging tomorrow in Milos. Okay, bye.